So I want to talk about my opinion. This is strictly my opinion about uh, whether or not uh, mobile developers should use uh, storyboards or nib files. Uh, there's a similar type of uh, uh, construct on uh, Android Studio where you can, it's roughly kind of mimics what you can do with storyboards uh, in the iOS world. And uh, we kind of sum everything up, I have to say no. So when I first, first started doing uh, iOS development, uh, I used uh, nib files. And nib files are kind of like a holdover from, uh, they're actually spelled Z-I-B now, but they used to be nib files, N-I-B. And they're resource files that used to be part of uh, something that was called uh, Interface Builder. And if you know anything about the history of uh, uh, Mac OS X and iOS, these were all things that were kind of brought over as tooling from, from the Next Step operating system. So it used to be in Next Step, they had a uh, program that was called Project Builder. And this had all these tools where you could kind of drag and drop uh, UI elements and stuff onto a window, and then you could wire them up to your code and uh, made the developer very productive. And as a matter of fact, uh, prior to doing iOS development, I used to do a lot of uh, uh, .NET development, and there's very similar tooling with Visual Studio where you can kind of drag these components onto a screen and then you can wire them up to your code. So um, one of the things that I came to discover is uh, when you are working by yourself, if you're just, you know, one developer working on the entire application, it's okay, you can kind of get away with uh, using storyboards and uh, zip files. But the main issue really comes down to one thing, and that is uh, source control and working with other developers, right? So typically when you have problems, uh, say merging source code, this is very common if you're using a distributed source control system like Git as an example where you'll have one developer that's working on a file, then you have another de developer that's working on that file, and they both make a commit about the same time. Now you've got, you try to merge, there's sometimes there's merge conflicts. And normally with a code file, that's actually something that's not that difficult to resolve. But since uh, storyboards and zip files are have this kind of weird arcane XML-based format, uh, uh, it's the same thing with uh, project files, as an example, uh, in Xcode. Uh, once you have a merge conflict in that, it can be difficult to, to try to resolve a merge conflict. And so what ends up happening is you basically have to kind of like throw away all the work that one of the developers did and then kind of start over from scratch or redo it, and it becomes a big nightmare. And so uh, I found this out, like I think a lot of uh, other developers do. I found it out the hard way. I was working on a project in my current company where it was the first one where we had multiple developers all kind of working in the same code base. And I had one developer that checked in a change, I checked in a change, and we had this horrible merge conflict. And then uh, the other thing that I realized is that uh, one of the developers I was working with had not worked uh, heavily with uh, iOS or uh, Swift, the Swift programming language. And one of the things I decided to do is, well, let's try to make things as easy as possible for our developers that are coming in. And so we switched to doing uh, uh, code-based uh, layouts. And one of the things I found out from, from doing that is that it actually, once you start doing that, uh, and especially start getting to the realm of like auto layout and stuff like that, it becomes a lot easier. And then the other thing too is that last year, Apple introduced Swift UI. And if you look at Swift UI, Swift UI essentially is following that same metaphor where you're actually designing uh, your interface in code. And uh, uh, it's very similar uh, to you know, what I think a lot of web developers are used to because they're kind of used to kind of declaratively uh, building out you know, a UI based off of components, pre-built components they've built. And if you've done any uh, React JS programming or uh, or you know, some of the other frameworks like Vue, these are kind of component-based, uh, you know, development uh, frameworks. And so, that being said, um, you know that seems to be the direction the the world is headed. And another reason too is that 
it used to be like when you had a, uh, a say an iPhone, the original iPhone, there was one size iPhone. It was a three and a half inch iPhone. And it was very easy to kind of like, you know, drag and drop onto a UI to kind of uh, build that out. But now there's all kinds of different sized iPhones. And that was also past, you know, past uh, devices and stuff that may be of different sizes. And the future ones are different sizes. And when you, want, when you write your application, you want to make sure that it runs perfectly on all those different devices. So uh, I think nowadays it makes a, a lot more sense uh, to do kind of a more code-driven uh, based uh, UI design as opposed to trying to use uh, tools like uh, uh, Storyboard or uh, Nib Files. So uh, this kind of sum everything up. Uh, you know, if you look at uh, what you know Google's doing in Android with uh, with their new framework and what Apple's doing with uh, uh, with Swift UI, you know that seems to be the direction that people are headed. You're going to have less problems if you have multiple developers all working inside the, the same code file. And then I think it makes uh, auto layout uh, a lot easier. So that being said, uh, you know, if you're still, you know, if you're one person and you're just kind of doing things just by yourself, uh, you know, I think it's, it's possible that, you know, storyboards and zip files uh, make sense. But uh, I, I think especially for working on teams, it doesn't make any sense to, uh, to use nib files or storyboards just because of the, the process, the problems you run into when you try to merge changes. So if you disagree with me or you have suggestions, some suggestions about better ways of being able to you know, handle those types of situations, please leave a comment. Uh, and if you like the, the content on this channel, please subscribe. Thanks. I'll talk to you guys later.